Okay, um, welcome folks. This is uh, OpenMRS Developer Forum, and uh, we're lucky enough today to have Matt and Maimuna here to give us a update, a uh, work in progress on um, work they're doing on uh, OpenSRP. So I'll let you take it away. Great. Um, thanks, everybody. It's uh, really great to be here. This is my first uh, OpenMRS call, and so I'm really excited. Uh, that we can be on, and thanks, Maimuna, for helping to get this set up. So just a very brief intro. So I'm Matt Berg. Um, I'm with a company called Ona, um, and we've been working uh, with, with Maimuna, her team, and Ali's team at IHS, and some other partners, including WHO, to develop OpenSRP um, for about four or five years now. Um, but we really started to get some nice traction um, kind of over the last year or two. Um, and a lot of that started when we started, to, we made the decision to integrate with OpenMRS uh, kind of as our core kind of back end. So I'll provide a very brief overview of kind of what o OpenSRP is um, kind of on the client side. Uh, then my Muna will kind of walk you through kind of what it means um, from the perspective of, of uh, uh, OpenMRS. Um, does everybody see my screen? So I make sure it's working. Yeah. All right. So the idea with, with, um, with OpenSRP is we really wanted to build, uh, it's, you know, our, our model right now is, um, you know, c connecting frontline health workers to national health systems. And another approach is, you know, we want to build kind of the app that health workers deserve. Um, so um, OpenSRP, the idea of OpenSRP is we want to develop, you know, very kind of client facing applications that could be, um, it could be health extension workers, so kind of CHWs at the community level. Um, but in many cases, it's um, kind of clinical staff um, doing services like ANC, uh, um, child immunization, where there's a clinical aspect, it might be a nurse midwife for a nurse, uh, and an outreach component at the community level. Um, so OpenSRP is designed to kind of um, bridge that gap between uh, like what OpenMRS provides pure clinically and that kind of outreach component. And that's one of the things that really uh, attracted us to the idea of linking it with 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 OpenMRS. And we'll, we'll go into that in a little bit in a minute. So. Um, this is an example of what um, one of the new apps that we're building uh, on Open, OpenSRP looks like. Um, so this is for uh, the BID initiative, the Better Immunization Data Initiative in Zambia, um, that we're, we're working with PATH uh, and the Ministry of Health, uh, and just to develop uh, a, a child immunization application. Um, so you can see the login screen on the right is kind of the register view. Um, so the idea with OpenSRP is we wanted to um, try and capture some of the, the concepts of the paper registers, um, but then make it, uh, you know, much more accessible um, than uh, they have on paper. Uh, so this is just kind of an overview of what the register looks like. And it's basically a way of looking up children um, at the clinic view. Uh, and then we have uh, kind of on the right side is actually the child's vaccine card. Um, so it's a very simple interface uh, designed to show what's due. Um, and you basically just tap on um, the icon to do the vaccines. Uh, you could, you know, tap to do the wait. So we kind of have removed forms as much as possible. There's like a, there's a form for kind of registering the inf information of the client. Um, but we're trying to optimize every interaction um, to be as quick as possible um, as, as we're doing this. Um, so that's sort of what kind of the clients kind of look like, the kind of approaches. Um, you have the ability to kind of also, you know, uh, record your events or basically to link it to a location. So it can be a clinic or it can be communities or outreach uh, catchment areas. And that information is linked to uh, the org IDs in DHIS2. Um, so we use a location module in OpenMRS to pull the hierarchy from DHIS2, and that's what populates um, our app. But my Muna can talk over that a little bit more. Hello, um, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Maimuna. Um, oh, hi. Can, okay. Yeah, so wonderful. So I'm almost done, and you can, I'll let you take over. And we've also, um, we're really focusing on the client side, so we also have created um, a bot interface that allows you to use Telegram or Facebook Messenger or SMS to look up client records, uh, do ANC cards, do vaccinations um, through a channel interface. So that updates OpenSRP, and then by default open, updates uh, open MRS. So um, with our basic, this is kind of a basic architecture of how um, OpenSRP works. We have kind of a light um, server. Um, that's our OpenSRP server. 
Uh, that's kind of based on the original MoTeC kind of code. So it's a Spring framework. Um, it has a couch database, which we're kind of currently using as, as a means for uh, keeping like a, a, a patient store. Uh, so basically, we're kind of using client event model um, and storing the data in, a, in something that's similar to Fire uh, for the data model. We have our client, which I just showed you, which is basically uh, a native Android app. Um, and we have different versions of the client depending on kind of the, the, the use case. We have a link to Rapid Pro for the messaging and for the bots and for doing alerts. Um, but then the key thing that you know is really driving our use is that we 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 decided to use OpenMRS as our data model. Um, so for that, we um, you know we define all of our concepts and our forms in OpenMRS. Uh, our forms in our app kind of map to concept IDs um, through X forms. Um, it OpenMRS provides the user management, the the location hierarchy. Um, and all that. So we, we created a two-way sync. So, you know, anytime there's an update in OpenSRP, we create a corresponding uh, encounter or client in OpenMRS. And then using a, a, an atom module, um, if there's any updates in OpenMRS, that updates OpenSRP. Um, and lastly, we integrate also with DHIS2. Um, and we're using that a lot for kind of the reporting that kind of the Ministry of Health would want. Um, so we're trying to mitigate and not trying to create um, things that we don't need to on our side and leverage, you know, OpenMRS for reports and DHS2 for reports uh, in those regards. Um, so I'm going to hand it over now to my Mono, but that's just kind of a very high level overview of kind of where we're at um, uh, with the work. Um, and my Mono, if you would like to take over. <clears throat> uh, yeah, sure. So uh, Matt already have explained uh, the overview and everything. Uh, so. Um, I don't know about the audience, but I would go into a little bit more technical details. Um, so this is um, the technical architecture of uh, OpenSRP. So we have OpenMRS, and then there is OpenSRP server or backend, and then there is OpenSRP mobile client. Uh, so for OpenMRS, uh, what we are using uh, OpenMRS for is uh, authentication and team management, and then uh, the powerful concept dictionary that is MVP seal dictionary, and then reporting. Uh, another thing that we started exploring and did uh, an initial work was uh, using uh, open web apps for um, creating um, UI for our um, open MRS, and as well as for our Open SRP because um, we can call REST services and everything, and Open SRP is RESTified. So we we call uh, Open SRP uh, REST links directly to render UI and all that. So um, then uh, uh, then there is Open SRP server. So Matt already have explained there there are integrations with Rapid Pro and DHIS and all that. But the major uh, basic architecture of Open SRP server it have MoTeC scheduling that is. Um, um, that is for health, creating health schedules and for basic um, uh, repeated jobs and all that. Then we, we, we then there is uh, OpenMRS connector that actually um, pushes and pulls data to and from OpenMRS. Um, and for for this purpose, we also extended um, the Atom Feed module that was uh, initially built by Bamni and. Um, we are using that atom feed module to maintaining to maintain two way sync. Uh, then there is um, then there uh, there is a, a client event model um, that allows uh, that that somewhat um, is similar to OpenMRS patient and then encounter model. Uh, then there are REST services. So um, for uh, we are using MySQL or Postgres, uh, both can be interchanged for um, cores, cores library that Motec uses, and then the main database is CouchDB. And we also have added CouchDB Lucene to, um, fa to, fast, to make uh, searches faster. Then um, there is mobile client. Uh, mobile client comprise of XLS forms. Um, XLS forms is a well-known standard and easy to create, and our users are, um, I mean, uh, are, are Forms are created by users. They can test it using Form Hub or Ona, and then um, they can uh, and they can provide us the final version, and then we embed those uh, into our mobile app. 
uh, then there is um, so mobile uh, uses sqlite for um, for data management and all that uh, next next slide can i hello hello yeah we can oh, hear sorry, you sorry sorry yeah. sorry 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 go ahead okay so uh, i already have explained that uh, so we are using couch db um, uh, for our um, data management uh, then motec and quartz for scheduling and lucene and then open mrs majorly for mrs in reporting and then authentication management and then mo mobile client uh, so uh, another thing is mobile client that right, is modular apps so we uh, so we have a core open SRP mobile app, and then users can create uh, Gradle modules to build their smaller apps. So they can extend the core and then uh, create uh, apps. And this is really simple to do that. Um, they basically have to extend few classes, follow few rules, and then uh, they can create their own register. Uh, next. Um, so uh, the major uh, part was uh, open MRS integration. Um, so um, we are we what we have tested we have tested it with open MRS it fully integrates and we have tested um, it uh, syncs patient and encounter data and all that and then we also have just tried out drugs and drug orders so it also syncs drugs and drug orders uh, that is majorly for BAMNI so uh, we have tried with both uh, open MRS and BAMNI as well so um, open SRP also integrates with BAMNI and then um, with uh, normal open MRS instance what we are uh, currently doing is uh, moving our um, current implementation to be able to um, use open MRS 2.0 but that is uh, that is a little bit challenging because there are a lot of changes and uh, and we are trying to uh, keep keep it up trying we are trying to upgrade uh, smoothly so that our existing installations don't affect due to this then um, uh, what we can uh, for open mrs integration uh, the major uh, con uh, open mrs contribution was atom feed module the um, um, we adopted the bamni atom feed module and modified it uh, so now any open mrs in installation can um, use that for um, for listening open SRP feeds. Then there was team management module. So what open MRS right now does not provide is um, allow creating teams of users uh, and in hierarchical model. So this is something that was missing and we built a team management module. And there is another thing, uh, we don't have provider and beneficiary mapping. I know this can be done via relationship mapping and all that, but we wanted to uh, create a patient and benefit and provider uh, so that we can pull uh, so that a pay, um, we can allow any uh, provider uh, to view data of his assigned beneficiaries only this is also done um, and uh, is deployed and being used in our um, bamne instance uh, but uh, we are uh, at the moment we are uh, working on um, making it redesign uh, we are uh, trying to revamp and redesign the team management module ui because the ui was not very much intuitive so um, this is this is some work that is under progress uh, so ui would be revamped and we are also um, doing some uh, redesigning in on architecture level so that uh, open mrs so the team management module can allow hierarchical team management so there so for example there is a supervisor he have a different teams those teams have different uh, team leads or people who are supervisors and then though each team can ha can uh, contain different other people and uh, it can create a complete hierarchy so i have uh, created a complete document on open mrs that is team management module redesign and um, let me share link in fact, I already have shared link in um, agenda document, so we can go uh, over it uh, later on. And then there was DHIS location module. This was a simple module that was um, that allows to pull uh, locations from DHIS into Open MRS. Um, I think there is another DHIS module that is DHIS report that also provides that. So that was some initial work done, and then we didn't take it forward. Then there is cohort module. I also work on in 
uh, with students uh, in making this module um, on GSOC, Google Summer of Code. There is another thing, schedule tracking. So what we needed uh, was uh, allow people to create and track health schedules. So Motec provides a really flexible way of creating health schedules and generate alerts. Um, and we are using it in open as open SRP, but there was no way to view that data on open MRS. So we created the architecture and all that to create that schedule tracking module that does not that have very simple mm -hmm. UI and does not do um, schedule management, but we can view all schedule data that is in open SRP next. So this is uh, location syncing. This, there was yeah. There were locations from uh, DHIS, those were imported imported into open MRS. Yeah, next. Let me just close this. Okay. Next. Yep. Okay, so um th these are the apps that different teams are working on for open SRP. So there are different teams in open SRP, one from Pakistan, uh, ONA, and then one from Bangladesh and Indonesia. So um there are uh, vaccination and family planning and PNC care work that is done by Bangladesh and they have really cool um, app but uh, and there is another path app that uh, ONA is work that ONA is working on that is uh, for child immunization and birth registration and AEFI might already have shown the screenshots for that and then uh, we also have an immunization app so we are uh, recording uh, so like it provides uh, TT vaccination for women and tracking child immunization from BCG to measles to stock register, household register, a basic reporting for vaccinators. Then um, for NTB, BAMNI NTB implementation, we are working on a TB app. Um, so that is under NTB project. So we are, uh, so right now it's under progress. Uh, we are working on treatment monitoring and contact tracing uh, because right now, uh, and. Uh, NTB uh, or BAMNI does not provide uh, treatment monitoring and contact tracing. So we are doing that via um, open SRP mobile app. And um, there are other apps as well, um, those we are working on. I think there is another CRVS app as well, um, but um, we, that is under progress. Next. Next. Hello? Yeah, yeah I, I, I moved it. You want work under progress? Okay, so this is the. So yeah, this is um, the current roadmap for. From April to. July, August and September, so we are uh, working on revamp or redesign of team management module. Uh, API is created now we are creating rest and UI and then there is another thing. Um, so you can view all of it in this Excel sheet, but there is another thing that is, so we are, uh, we already have, so we were, our mobile client was using Enkito forms, uh, those you, that use web, uh, web client on uh, Android. So that is sometimes really slow. Um, that works well for simple phone, but when logic is complex, so it uses JavaScript and all that, so it's really complex. So uh, we are, work, so we already, so, are working on JSON form renderer for Android. It, it's really cool and works well. Uh, then we are also exploring uh, ODK integration. If it can be integrated with ODK because ODK uses XLS form and there is simple X form that can be downloaded and integrated well. So we are trying that out. So that is also on our roadmap. We adopted, we had, we uh, inherited CouchDB with OpenSRP. So, but CouchDB is big data and big data have limitations. Um, especially when it comes to insertion and updates. So we are working on CouchDB performance improvements. Uh, so we are getting, uh, we are reading tutorials and trying to uh, get some uh, some lessons from the experiences of other people and trying to do some tweaks in to improve CouchDB performance. Then BAMNI integration, that's already done. We are, we have to do an alpha release. Then uh, there is upgrade to, to OpenMRS 2.0. This is, uh, Right now, this is not the utmost priority. Uh, it's I think and um, it's I think scheduled for July or June because uh, 
right now all of our implementations mm-hmm. are open mrs 1.11.5 and then um, we are uh, open srp itself is on java 7 so um, first we have to move our open srp to java 8 and then open mrs 2.0 I think Ansible spelling is not correct. To simplify uh, installation of OpenSRP um, with Ansible, right now we have tried it with um, simple bad scripts and SSH scripts. Uh, it works, and we also have a Docker uh, installation. But we are trying to uh, do an installation like Bamni does. Uh, we are trying to learn from experiences of different people. Uh, so Bamni uh, provides a really cool way of installing. Um, uh, in similar similar to Omni, we also have a lot of components like CouchDB, CouchDB Lucene, and then MySQL and Java, and there are there is OpenMRS itself. So what we are trying, we are trying to automate all these installations, and then we are also using ActiveMQ so, and Tomcat. So we are trying to make this uh, in a single click or at least with one or two simple commands. So we already have tried uh, one uh, with an um, with. open m with, with no open mrs installation so that works well but that is with bad scripts not ansible scripts so we would be trying ansible scripts um, and then uh, would be simplifying the installation team management module uh, revamp and redesign is under progress schedule tracking um, we are uh, we worked on it uh, a little while ago but we are trying to improve that then um, there is another important work that we are um, desperately looking for um, is dynamic register building so our and so what we want is uh, user don't have to do any kind of android development for creating a register on open srp and uh, this is what we are working on so odk odk integration and json form render is part of that um, effort so uh, the user should be able to just modify a few files or tweak different things uh, on um, maybe ui or at least in app uh, to create a module that shouldn't require any android developer or java development for creating a register so this is something we are working on and then um, so xls form so first i have to explain a little bit of xls form so we are using xls forms for um, for um, rendering our ui on a mobile app and then doing uh, and then pushing data to open mrs uh, so we need a mapping from uh, open srp to open mrs each field in open srp needs to be mapped to open mrs concept or open mrs field so there were two ways uh, either we hard code it use some um, use a some file or do something for uh, do something in code to uh, allow that but what we did we uh, we added another we added another column to the xls form and then those columns can map open S- open mrs concepts and those that is parsed dynamically and pushes data so we have written a code that is called open srp connector that and pushes data dynamically to open mrs why are those concept mapping when field mapping and we are trying to do a similar kind of thing for dhis so that we don't have to write any java code for that so this is a uh, work under progress and the road map for next few months next next hello yeah i i changed it. i think there's a delay so sorry i think you, you skipped want the, okay. you skip the one back first this one so this is uh, the team management ui we can create teams and team members we can track history um, this is road map can you just move up up next, next. i think there's a delay next. between no stay on, the, stay on that one yeah this one yeah so this is team management ui yeah another thing what we are trying we um, we already have um, a bit of it uh, in team management module that we want to track complete history of any events happened with team or team members so for example uh, there was a team uh, which had five members and a supervisor but then later on supervisor of team was changed so now there would be another supervisor and that he would be maintaining team so each data entry done under supervisor 1 um, needs to be needs to be logged or tracked with so for example there is a mistake that was um, identified later on and then we find out okay the supervisor was changed in that team at that point of time so we com- 
maintain complete history of that and then we also maintain complete history of uh, when a member was transferred to another team so that we can track uh, what happened with the team so this is um, this was history in current this was uh, recorded as history in current team manual module but we are trying to maintain um, rename is to log and then that log would contain all the details about the event happened uh, next Can I, can I just say one thing? So just to give you a sense also, the it's really the team manage the module's really been great because it allows us on the client side to sync basically at the facility level or at a zone level. So we can assign a bunch of health workers access to a team, which could be a facility, and then they have access to all those clients at that facility. Or we can assign a health worker or a team of health workers just to a specific community or two, and then they would have shared access to the clients at that level. Um, so it's worked really well for us uh, so far. Okay. Yeah, and then we are uh, each team member is a user, and we are maintaining all roles and permissions on team management module. And then you can see these registers. There are four registers. So we by using Open MRS roles and permissions, assigning or unassigning them, we can hide and show these registers. So if so, for example, in in one of our app, what we do, we have vaccinators, and then there are lady health workers. So lady health workers are supposed to see all these four registers, and vaccinators are supposed to see only three registers. So we have a single app and then we just use the role of uh, role and permissions of uh, people and then we hide these registers next this is simple um, ui we can go through it quickly so there are permissions role these permissions and roles determine whether a person would have permission to view a particular register or not and their team information and location information next this is household register view. Um, there are, we are registering household and household members next. And then we are using QR codes for identifying people. So if we can uh, either we can um, we can scan a QR code. So this is a little uh, older screenshot. We provide two mechanisms of uh, assigning IDs. One is QR code scanning, and but sometimes what happens QR code is not uh, scannable. Camera is not working or any any problem so we can enter you event we can manually enter id as well so there is another button that allows a uh, user to uh, manually enter id so yeah. we've also next. built into sorry we've also built into open srp integration with the open mrs uh, id gen module so you can generate ids and yeah. then uh, assign it to the client and then the, the the client app can assign ids as you generate new users from that pool of ids generated by open mrs This is the uh, details view, and we can vaccinate or do uh, different things with this with these team members. So these are women and child, so we can vaccinate those if there is a person who is uh, not a, who is not a child, not a, and neither a woman, then uh, he don't have we don't have option to vaccinate that. That's all. Next. Next. Um, this is women register. We can we do uh, women vaccinations. Um, next. Uh, this is women details. Uh, details view of that the vaccinations received and women is fully humanized and all that. The other details associated with each each woman. Next. So we are not using the uh, feature, but we uh, but OpenSRP also allows you to capture pictures and capture and track pictures of people. So uh, we are not using it in our app, but one of uh, our team is working is using that feature. So they keep they actually take picture of uh, ID card or people and then uh, track those. So it also allows that. This is child view next, child register view next. Um, next. So this is the immunization card uh, on zero week child have to receive BCG and OPV um, and um, this is the actual date when he received it on six week and this is the complete vaccination schedule. Uh, it also tells when it child had to receive it and when the vaccination was actually received. Next. It's just more views of that. Okay. So you can see uh, back. The child view. 
Okay, it, let it load. Um, is it showing child view? Uh, yeah, this is the child details. That's what I see. Um, yeah, we're seeing okay. child details. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, these are child details. So you can see uh, these vaccines are due, have not received. Um, so this gender is complete vaccination card. The vaccines are due or received. Next. Yeah. This is the same. Okay, next. We're on the dashboard, open our dashboard page. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So uh, this is uh, Open MRS, uh, Open Web Apps module. So um, we are. This data is uh, direct rendered directly from um, Open SRP. So this is. These are Open SRP CowsDB documents that we have worked on. Right now we are not uh, displaying op data from Open MRS, uh, but we are using Open MRS, uh, Open Web Apps uh, module to um, render that data. This is uh, this was very initial work, and we are working on it because uh, there were other things um, that we those were priority, and especially mobile client app. But uh, our next target is to um, ma make a complete UI for uh, for this, and also to um, make a, com a generic UI that allows administering Open SRP as well. Next. Okay, so this is this is not done. Uh, this is the aim of uh, open SRP. Uh, IHS aim for open SRP. Oh. So you so want just, all registers in one tablet. So, yeah, so I mean, this just, was just, very initial. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, my mother. Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead, Noel. I was just saying. I mean, yeah. Just just to kind of follow on with kind of the vision thing. So one of the things that we're really excited by with with open srp and with what um uh, open mrs has allowed us to do with this kind of shared data model is that it allows us like you notice why presented a very kind of slightly different looking app which is really designed for immunization um, but then you know we have versions of this that are uh, optimized for anc services uh, or whatnot um, and what we can do is we can develop different versions of open srp for the different type of health worker and really design a very focused uh, UI and kind of workflow for that for that function of their job. Um, and so have different kind of versions of the app, but then syncing uh, using a common data model, fall, falling into um, a common reporting uh, and management backend. Um, and that's been really, I think, exciting for us because we really see the future of this kind of work, especially at the community level, being kind of this this uh, coordination of different health workers doing their different functions. Um, and then the other thing we're really excited by is kind of the open MRS Bomni piece, because there's a lot of scenarios where, like, say we're working on HIV, um, we might want to have a very, very simple um, referral form or a very simple module in open SRP for HIV, but we really would prefer to have um, using Bomni or, or a richer kind of clinical interface for HIV management as an example. Um, and since we're using kind of a common back end, we, we don't have to compromise and we can have you know, uh, some clinic functions being done with OpenSRP where it makes sense um, from like the simpler kind of lightweight approach, or we could use OpenMRS or Bomni and Bomni Client um, for other functions. Um, so that I think is really, really powerful. And I think what sets us apart from a lot of the other kind of mobile apps out there that don't fully buy into the EMR backend. Um, the other thing that's exciting is we can scale two different ways. We could scale vertically, so we can run basically this in the cloud with OpenMRS is kind of like a cloud shared health record to some extent. But we also can run this locally where, you know, where you're, you're just syncing to a local open, OpenMRS instance. Um, so you can run this kind of a mobile client completely offline and then have OpenMRS be the, you know, thing that connects to OpenHIE uh, up to the cloud um, and sync. So um, I think having that flexibility of either, you know, having it run locally at a clinic or going to syncing up to the cloud and then having OpenMRS and uh, OpenSRP sync that way, um, you have both options. And I think that's really kind of powerful. Um, so we're really excited by you know, the choice of to kind of use OpenMRS as a backend. I think that's it for our slides. Cool. Um, I, I 
put some questions in the notes as we're going along. Are you are you ready for some questions? Yeah, let me let me close. Yeah, sure, those. please. Go ahead. Um, so one one was uh, why why did you choose not to use relationships for recording the patient provider relationship? Um, so there were uh, multiple reasons. Uh, one, we uh, wanted to track teams team and then uh, so our case was like we have community community health workers and um, we have um, patients assigned to each treatment supporter so um, and then uh, what we do when we authenticate a user we want to pull all data for that so open um, rest service was not that much efficient uh, and we were not able to pull um, data based on that uh, we could have provided uh, feedback on that, but uh, there were so we wanted to keep track of team as well. So because uh, our case is uh, mostly for community health work, so um, that was the major reason because uh, the, this was not uh, allowing us to maintain complete hierarchy. Okay. So uh, we are using relationships, uh, patient relationships, but that is majorly for maintaining relationships for between different people, like how for household, uh, like people who are living in household, what relationship they have with household head and all that. And there's a lot of we need the flexibility, and I don't know if it yeah. affects the premise to be able to, if if a child shows up in a different clinic, um, we have to have the ability of of being able to still provide them a service. Um, and not really having it. And then, um, and then uh, we also wanted to um, track people based on teams and team complete team hierarchy. So that was not available. Um, if you want yeah. to check, so there is. A, so I'm. Wait. I'm sharing a link that is a theme management module redesign plan. So this link contains a complete plan of how we are um, seeing our team management module. And uh, yeah. And it does not provide complete hierarchy, hierarchical model. Yeah, it looks like it is. Okay. Did you, um, I know you, you described your scheduling um, service and, and maybe it goes beyond or it's more kind of for outreach scheduling, but did you consider a look at the appointments um, module in terms of, I don't know, in terms of your scheduling needs, like does it overlap with what the appointments module does? Uh, we explored appointment module, actually I kind of forgotten uh, why we didn't try that, but what, so our scheduling needs were, um, mostly based on like uh, we have a health schedule uh, and then uh, what we need to do we need to track complete status whether a schedule is uh, upcoming and then whether it's due or it have gone beyond that or it has expired and then we were uh, maintaining who for who has scheduled that and then who is responsible to look that and all that and then there was uh, there and there were previous events uh, there were the, there were um, so we wanted schedules based on previous dates so for example we wanted from date of birth or maybe from penta one date for uh, health schedule so th that was the major reason that we didn't use appointment schedule that the ui and everything was mostly for appointments it was not for health schedule so our case was vaccinations um, but in we we are not at the moment we are not using appointments or doctor or okay. patient appointment type of thing okay that's what i figured that that you were your your types of schedules were probably a different need um 
Yeah. And you answered my question about whether you were using Docker at all, and it sounds like you're you're exper experimenting with that as well as Ansible. Um, and I, I assume when you when you do the household register, are you using the cohorts or cohort module behind the scenes for that? Um, we we haven't we haven't started using that. We are planning to use that uh, right now. Our household module is not using a uh, cohort module, but we are we would be uh, needing that for viewing data. OK. Yeah. Well, those were the questions I came up <laughs> along the way. I don't know if others have questions. I see Daniel Wycliffe. So, uh, when I want to ask one thing, uh, maybe it's irrelevant or maybe a little relevant as well. Uh, so, we have OpenMRS REST service, and then um, what it provides. Uh, so, can so does is there a way that we can? So, when we were uh, doing our scheduling thing, um, the scheduling and thinking thing, the major problem we faced was OpenMRS REST service. Uh, does not provide uh, data fetching based on dates, last edit date, or maybe date created. So is uh, Open MRS team planning to apply that to all REST services? So for example, uh, we want to uh, we want to pull all patients modified in a particular date, or maybe we want all encounters happen during a particular date. Is is there any plan to apply that? <laughs> I don't know that. I don't know why that couldn't be included. I don't know personally of uh, that. That's on our radar. I don't know if if Wyka for Daniel, if you know. And uh, then there is another question. Um, so open so I haven't tried open MRS docker installation. Maybe I need to try that. But uh, open is it possible that we can embed open MRS as application as an embedded application into our own open SRP instance? So I tried a workaround to um, allow that. But for example, we have we are creating an installer for open SRP, but uh, we don't want that open MRS um, show its um, UI like installer UI or initial setup UI. So that was a kind of workaround defined on OpenMRS Wiki. But um, does OpenMRS allow that? So you're talking specifically like, can you skip the installation process? Yeah. yeah. yeah there there is a there is a way I believe to to bypass the installation process. Again, I think if if Wycliffe or Daniel have voice, I don't know if they do. I see them both on the call, but they're both muted. But yes, there is a there is a way to to bypass them. Hello. Hey. Um. Uh, sorry. Uh, I was muted. So, uh. So. What do you mean by bypassing the install? I mean, there's no bypassing the manual steps of ins installation, doing an un an unattended installation of OpenMRS. I don't think there is a way. Really? So there is no way you can skip it. Yeah, I because mean, you can, uh, but it's what? still manual. You're going to have to create the database. You're going to have to create. I mean, it's actually more painful to skip it. Uh, yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't think we're. I don't think we're saying to skip the steps of the installation. I think what she's asking is, can you that do an it, unintend, unattended install? Which I thought the standalone let you do. Yeah, I don't think there's. I mean, we don't have like a headless. You know, where you can install the numbers. The standalone still, uh, well, the standalone gives you that, but it's because some, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the standalone is the only way you can have something that is already pre-installed, you know? But uh, 
but does stand alone allow to i haven't tried stand alone ever uh, does stand alone allow so it uses uh, some um, embedded database does it allow us to connect to mysql it it, yeah. it yes. has its mysql embedded so is so uh, on stand alone installation i read that it's not recommended for production use that's right. what I was about to say that the standard query is meant for production usage. So. Right. But that's because it's using the embedded database. Isn't it possible right. to set up the standalone to, to connect to uh, another database if you change the runtime? The runtime. I don't think so. Yeah, currently it's, it's set to use its embedded database. It's not tailored to connect to another database. Why would you even want to use it just for the sake of connecting to some other database? What would be the use case? I think we just don't want to use I, the embedded database. Yeah, I think what they're looking for is a way to do an unattended install of OpenMRS. And I think, I think the, the, what like Cynthia has been working on in the, you know, using Docker for like our continuous integration might actually be a more viable path. Than, than trying to use a standalone. I would think we just need to have that as a new feature to be able to install OpenMRS say, from a configuration file or. No, don't yeah, we there... already have that? I thought we already had that, whereby you could uh, like make it. A... Yes, I think we already have it in the platform. I... Do you know what ticket that was? Well, implemented. I'll, I'll cross check, but I remember even seeing Rafael use it. Yeah, I, I think I, it's being used for the continuous integration and for the Docker installs. There, there, there. Sure. It's being done. So I think, I, I think this exists. We don't. We we need to try to help you get to, the the correct answer, Maimuna. What I would okay, imagine is that somebody wants to install OpenMRS in an interrupt well in an interactive way versus not using something like docker because to i don't think that's what they want it has to be something that is part of open MRS that i can install it you know i download the WAR file drop in tomcat and i have it installed in, in, in an interactive way yeah we have that widely in the WAR file that the, the WAR file you download and it already has that Yep. Okay. Of the platform. Uh, do we have any instructions for that or Vicky? Can you please share the link? I'll I'll cross check if if I don't find anything, then I'll take it upon myself to document. Okay. Thank you. So just just ping me to uh, if you don't see me get back to you in a day, just ping me and I ask just ask for the link. Okay. Um, just a quick follow up question. I think Wyclef, I saw you on uh, OpenMRS talk talking about this. Is there any good audit module for OpenMRS? Um, basic idea is wanting to be able to view and log um, changes that are made uh, to any encounters and by who? Uh, if you're talking about something like who stole the cookie from the jar. Uh, there is a module that I wrote, uh, and uh, I don't know whether it's production ready, but uh, you can take a look and see what you can get out with. I wrote it, and uh, I was just, you know, in that state where I'm like, if somebody is interested, I can go forward and improve it. You know, it's it really has um, minimal you know features in terms of the user interface but right under the hood it has the engine that tracks any domain objects that is when they get created when they get updated and when they get uh deleted from the database and uh all that is what tracked the user interface is very minimal it just shows you okay. basically a log table that shows basically those actions happening Okay. That's it. Yeah, That's, but, but, but the data model is working in the database. You can yeah, the, under the hood, the engine really. I try to make sure it, it addresses every, you know everything that I could think of. Okay, wonderful. All right, so we'll be in touch. If you that. go in 
to modulus i think it should be there and uh in the github project i wrote up some documentation on how you set it up so if you go to okay. github.com slash open slash open module audit log that's where that's the best case space in github where it is and there's a readme file on how you install the module how you configure it and then yeah you can try it out and and then you can get back to me if you have any questions we'll do that thank you yeah I, from my recollection that was created in part with us experimenting with the idea of centralizing all the audit you know like every table in openmrs has changed by or date changed or you know those kinds of tracking details but there's it's just you know one entry in each row and uh and i think i think part of the impetus for wycliffe creating that was more for architecturally could we centralize that level of auditing um there's a subtly different um auditing need that sometimes people are looking for in electronic medical records which is accountability of when did you know who looked at this patient's record and i think that might be a a, a slightly different set of requirements from what what wycliffe created so it depends what you're yeah. looking for yeah ours is just based on who edited they want to make sure that nobody goes in and corrupts data things yeah, like that yeah yeah that's really the um and at the at the facility yep. level we're allowing them to do edits so um it's it's really to make sure there's not abuse yeah yeah so that's yeah the model basically records who edited who created who, who deleted and the date when that happened perfect i love but, another uh, people it list. doesn't really <laughs> reflect like things from the application layer but rather from the uh service layer basically right. awesome. i don't know if that make, makes sense yeah i know it does um cool all right. So we'll be we'll, we'll try it out and get and get back as, as we have uh, questions that hopefully we can contribute to it. Yep. All right. Well, I'm mind, <laughs> mindful of the time. We're down to our last minute. Any any parting shots, last comments? I want to thank you guys for sharing. It's it's amazing to see the the work you guys are doing. Um, you know, the, the way you've kind of pulled together, together a lot of different uh, resources. I really appreciate your, your approach of not trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, and, it's, and it's really cool to see the, the type of functionality you're able to produce. So, um, yeah, so on to something real quick. I know sure. they asked the question about dead change being included in REST. And I will muted, I think, both me and Daniel. And the answer to that is that change already is included uh, as law. I think for the if you either specifically request for it in your filter by it, I think what they're asking for is can you filter, can you search by it, not whether or not it exists in the JSON that comes back. Yeah. Oh, searching. Um, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't think so. No, it does not provide this OpenMRS API does not have that functionality, so it, it don't it don't uh, and REST service don't have it either. No, I think I think that's a viable um, thing to include, but um, yeah, I mean I think you can add an, a, a REST service that that like a filter that does that, but that would be probably expensive to some extent. Yeah, because it would be changing the, the API. Yeah. yeah. But it should be something that you can, you know, add as a new feature. So rather than yeah. saying we either have to have it all or none, we could come take the approach of, okay, here's how we would, would do it, add that capability to some key, you know, API calls that are the most important ones for you, and then but then with the pattern of, okay, when we add this to other APIs, we'll do it in the same way. Well, and just, we'll, we'd be happy to share. We're going to have a, a, a pretty stable release out in the next week. 
for what I showed you, uh, the first couple slides for the vaccine app. Um, so if anybody has interest in checking that out, um, let me know and I could share the APK and login into on our demo account. Um, we're also going to be rolling that out um, with uh, iTech uh, and CDC in Kenya in a in a district. Um, so the leveraging OpenMRS there is also kind of kind of cool. Um, All right. Well, I want to be respectful of people's time. Thank you very much for joining. Thanks for the update on Open uh, Open SRP. Um, We have uh, um, next week, um, it's not going to be a ThoughtWorks uh, Bomni update. They want to uh, reschedule that until after they do their next update. So we are pr pr going to bump up the um, Darius's kind of crazy ideas discussion to next week's call, which is basically coming with what kind of crazy things could we do um, in OpenMRS, like, I don't know, adding um, date change to all our API methods. Um, so, so uh, anyway, so mm. would welcome folks to that. Um, Matt, were you trying to say something? Matt has gone. Yeah, left oh, the chat. We lost Matt. Okay. So thank you, thank you, Maimuna, for for presenting, and thanks to Matt. And uh, we will um, hopefully. Uh, see folks next week but between now and then we'll see you in cyberspace okay thanks to you uh, as well it's always fun to uh, work on open mrs and with the open mrs team <laughs>